Well, any kind of digital transformation comes with its own set of advantages, goals and responsibilities. Yes, responsibilities. As organizations continue to innovate, they need to be responsible to the society, to the environment they operate in. And one focus area that really cuts across every industry is how to measure and understand carbon emissions, to set sustainability goals and also to take measurable action to accelerate responsible innovation. Irina Ghosh, the Executive Director, Cloud Solutions at Microsoft India, is up next, talking to Ramesh Raman, the Senior Vice President, Technology and Business Development at Adani, North America, to dive deeper into avenues of sustainable growth. Let's listen in. Hi, Ramesh. Welcome to Future Ready. We are really excited to have you here. As one of the fastest growing conglomerates in India, Adani Group is expanding and leveraging tech at the core to create the digital edge for the entire group. To start the conversation, can you tell us a little about why digitization is so important for you? Most of the audience will know us as an infrastructure conglomerate. And we have two kinds of businesses. One are B2B businesses like ports, power, including thermal, renewable power transmission, distribution, and mining where our customers are private and public companies. And the second kind of business we have are our branded products and services that are directly used by end consumers. This is a fast growing segment for us and includes our Fortune branded cooking oil, Adani Electricity, where we provide electricity to homes in Mumbai, of uh, Adani Total Gas, where we distribute natural gas to uh, 50, 50 plus cities across India, Adani Realty, where we provide real estate, services in Adani FinServe. The, the drivers for digi digitization or digitalization, as we call it, are different for the two segments. For the first segment, it's, it's really to manage our growth. Our growth over the last 25 years has meant that we have literally hundreds of large footprint sites across the country that we're running, from ports to solar and wind farms to thermal power plants, among others. While we could run a few sites with a small and strong operations team, this gets more and more difficult as a, the number of sites grow and the complexity of our operations increase. So for the B2C, uh, on the other hand, the B2C segment, it's about providing a common engagement model for our consumers across all our businesses. Over and above uh, the, the drivers for each of these segments is a larger, larger uh, driver for a reason for our, our initiatives in this front across the group. For every one of the segments that we are in, every one of the sectors that we are in are driven by larger trends, whether it's India's economic growth, the technology advancements that we are all pretty familiar with, climate change, geopolitical shifts that are fundamentally reshaping supply chains. Uh, you know, those are also, you know, overlaying our internal drivers. Our mission has always been to provide India with the kind of infrastructure, the modern infrastructure that it needs to support its growth. In some periods, it means replicating assets and infrastructure that other parts of the world already have, whether it's power plants or ports. In some cases, it means leapfrogging what exists everywhere else. And we believe digitalization is one of those areas. That's such an expanse of things which is happening by the Adani Group and so much of it going towards nation building that it's uh, really awe-inspiring. So what are some of the things that you're doing particularly towards digitization? Um, what are some of those differentiating elements given that there's a, a lot of pull from customers for digital adoption as well as the fact that there is so much which is happening from your peers as well. So there are competing pressures as well. Well, we have five main elements. One, we are migrating our IT infrastructure to the cloud very rapidly. Two, we have started a data center business to accelerate the build out of digital infrastructure within India. Three, we're building uh, an industrial platform on the cloud to operate our B2B assets, our large industrial sites. Four, we're developing a super app for end consumers across India. And five, uh, we are developing, uh, building out a world-class AI capability to address uh, what we believe are some of the hardest problems in sustainability and industrial operation. It, it is awesome to see how much good work is coming out of India over the last few years. 
Having multiple companies and groups work on digitization will create the critical mass of talent that will be needed for a country like India to be competitive in the years ahead, where knowledge will drive the competitive edge for a country. By definition, each of the groups that you referred to participate in different sectors, will have different business goals and therefore different approaches. So it's really hard to compare. For us, the critical metric is, are we making the life of our customers better and whether we're moving the needle on the macro macro objectives of the country itself? Uh, coming to airports in particular, so you will have a great penetration in airports across the country, especially Mumbai Airport now being the busiest, which really gives you an edge in the overall logistics industry with both ports and air. So can you share a little bit about your thoughts about how you all are thinking about involving and immersing yourselves in digital tech and how this can help you scale the operation across different airports. We've been looking at some how some of the, the leading airports around the world are pushing digitalization and, and uh, as a consequence, developing our own uh, journey in India. At the end of the day, it's about making the travelers stay at the airport less stressful and more productive, keeping the airport safe and the airport operations humming, working closely with various stakeholders, including airlines and security organizations, etc. On air cargo, uh, the multimodal logistics is an area we, uh, which we have a lot of experience in and is intrinsically data and algorithm driven. More broadly, though, the, the, ta the, the tactical goals of digitalization of airport are not rocket science. It's like any other sector, right? So you have clean, complete, easily accessible real-time data about what's happening uh, within the airport across operations. We want to make sure that those operations are safe and efficient uh, and there is greater engagement with the consumers who are uh, traveling and, 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 and transiting through that airport. These goals haven't changed in 20 plus years. However, what has changed is really the speed of this change, right? The business models, the consumer taste, the technology are all evolving rapidly and independently. And that's really one of the big goals of any digital transformation these days, isn't it? Unlike in the past where companies are locked in with business rules through difficult ERP implementations, locked in with specific partners, the future will need to be a lot more flexible from a, from a technology perspective. Shorter implementations, more experimentation, flexible systems, support for uh, building up internal capability. Those will all become essential uh, in how we build. None of these were true in the old ERP era. That's absolutely true. And I think the way you kind of transition from what things were to where things will be, where you brought in that element of simplicity, I think that will be the core at how um, you all will look at differentiating yourself. Now, let me take a little bit of a parallel track. The future of infrastructure will actually require both sustainability and innovation to be at the core and the heart of both design and execution. Mr. Adani um, has already announced about the 70 billion investment to become the largest, world's largest renewable energy company. How are you getting ready to deliver to this promise? So the investments there will include our uh, investments in solar and wind as well. In case of solar power generation footprint, we are already the largest in the world. We are also going to invest significantly in the hydrogen value chain, including electrolyzers. Other areas include uh, green grids, green data centers, backward integration to secure the supply chain in both our solar and wind generation businesses, as well as our AI-based industrial cloud platform. I briefly alluded to this earlier, to this, this AI platform earlier. Sustainability is an area which is, uh, interestingly enough, evolving and advancing as rapidly as digital technologies are. Whether it's our solar panel efficiency, whether it's battery cost and performance, whether it's green hydrogen production costs and the technologies that go into making hydrogen work. However, uh, algorithms, and I'll use algorithms in a broader sense, AI or otherwise, have the potential to help. Uh, there is a lot to be done to achieve these COP26 goals on climate change, while at the same time ensuring that consumers and industry in India continue to get cheap and reliable, reliable being the catchword there, power. Our understanding of both the renewable technologies, the underlying uh, infrastructure requirements, as well as the digital algorithms, along with this, the scale of the commitment that Mr. Adani has announced, should really help us accelerate this journey. Thank you so much, Ramesh. It was thank wonderful you. having you with us. And thank you so much for all your time.
Thank you for inviting me. Thanks.